they're sensing a, a difference between the sun's magnetic field from the solar wind, the northern lights, if you like, and also the permanent magnetic field of the Earth, which is generated inside our planet itself. And uh, that's how astrology works. It's very simple. Let's talk about reincarnation for a moment, another term you don't see in a science book all that often. How does you, do your theories uh, affect your views of reincarnation? How did they reinforce it? Well, it's interesting. I met a researcher a few years ago, not that many. I mean, I'd been well on my uh, way with my research at that time. And he'd come to the conclusion quite independently that Tutankhamun was the same person as Jesus. And, and it, what's interesting is the inference he drew from that. He therefore inferred Given that Jesus was Tutankhamun, that all of the dates in the Bible must be wrong by 1,500 years. So he rewrote the Bible and changed all of the dates. Now I agree, that's one way of doing it, from one inference. I had arrived at the same conclusion. Tutankhamun was the same being as Jesus. Based but on I what? believe the Bible, and I believe the dates in the Bible, which means there can only be one explanation. When Tutankhamun died, he came back again 1,500 years later as Jesus. And therefore, uh, this uh, step of the uh, step in existence, if you like, was born in my brain, and it became clear that there's a film going around called Zeitgeist. I'm sure many of your uh, listeners sure. have, have seen it and heard of it. And basically it says that there are lots of uh, characters throughout history who, who have come into the world and uh, propounded or given the same creation story of a messiah who was born on the 25th of December. He was born in a stable. Uh, when he grew up, he performed miracles. And when he died, he became the planet Venus, the brightest source of light in the heavens. And the inference they've drawn from this is that it's all a myth. It's all a lie. It's just a story that somebody's made up that somebody keeps repeating. Well, that's one inference. What I've shown is that the guy who brought this story to Mexico was called Lord Paycal, and his bones were found in a pyramid in Mexico. Another guy that brought this story was called Tutankhamun, and his bones were found in a tomb in Egypt. Two other guys who brought the story was called Viracocha and Viracocha Pachacamac, two tall white gods who walked the lands of Peru in ancient times, and their bones have been found in the pyramids of Peru in Saipan. Now, once you realize that it, the, the people who put forward the story had bones, had arms and legs and skin, then it's not a myth. They lived. The only rational explanation is that these guys who keep coming back, it's the same guy who keeps coming back. It's not a story. And once you get your head around that, then you have to find a scientific mechanism which will fit in with this story. And when I went down to Mexico and started to decode the treasures of the Mayas, I then uh, discovered pictures of God and pictures of Jesus left behind by the leader of the Maya called Lord Paycal. Now, Paycal is, an, is a derivation from the word Pascal. Pascal is derived from the Passover, the Jewish word for Passover, or the Hebrew word, which is Pasach. What this means is that uh, Lord Paycal and Easter have something in common. It's the time when Jesus died on the cross and he was reborn. And this is what Lord Paycal was trying to tell us of the Maya. He was Jesus in a previous incarnation. Once you get your head around that, we can decode all of this, the stories in his various treasures. In the architecture of the pyramids of Mexico, we get the same story encoded as we do in the jewelry, the, the necklace he wore around his neck, the jade mask he wore across his face. We get the same story repeated in the paintings that they, they found in, war, in, uh, in temples in Mexico. And the same story uh, found in the carvings of the Maya. It's the same story, and it tells us he was born in a stable. When he grew up, he performed miracles. When he died, he became the star Venus, pure, purest and brightest star in the heaven. And he tells us that those with a pure heart will go to heaven, and those who don't have a pure heart will come back to earth 
for another try at purification. And that brings us on to all the ancient sciences of astrology. Uh, it brings us on to clearly an understanding of reincarnation. It, it teaches us about uh, karma, the, the scientific law, the universal law of cause and effect. It, it explains why rich people can't go to heaven, why it is uh, easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a, of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. And all of the uh, scriptures begin to ha take on a different meaning. And the scriptures begin to explain why we're born, why we die, what God is, what the devil is, why we, why we have to die, how we can get to heaven, how not to get to heaven. And all of this is in future science, uh, which... You've, you've seen, George. Uh, you know, the, it is Easter, or at least it was. Last night it was Easter when we started this program and discussion. Uh, so we should acknowledge at least that the Christian faith today does not really recognize reincarnation. It's not, not specifically, I guess, say it, it can't happen, but it's, it's kind of wishy-washy about it and basically uh, anti-reincarnation. But my understanding, well, and I'm not an expert me, on this, George, is that... If I can that, interject there, that's sure. not actually true. Because what I show in the book, using Einstein's equation, E equals MC squared is that God is electromagnetic energy. Well, what I was going to say is this, is that it, early Christian theology was that reincarnation was, was okay, that they were all right with it. It was changed somewhere along the way. Yeah, there was change somewhere along the way, and that's, that, you know, that change happens. But the early cr Christians believed it, and the later Christians believe it, but they don't realize it. And the <laughs> reason is, what I've shown in the book is that this, the physical world is hell. Now, it's, it's explained in the book very simply. This is hell. We're living in hell now. Now, if you look at what modern Christians believe, they believe in the notion of body and soul. They believe that if you live a good life, then your, your soul goes to heaven. If you live a bad life, your soul goes to hell. What I've said is, but this is hell, <laughs> which means that your body comes back to earth. So when the Christians say it goes to hell, it goes to the earth. So they do believe in reincarnation, it's just that they don't understand what they believe. It's like the scientists who don't understand what they've discovered. So, so uh, we, we, uh, using Einstein's equation, using the science of God e equals mc squared, you know, if you look at the Bible, if you look at the Bhagavad Gita, the holy book of the Hindu, if you look at the Dharmapada, the book of the Buddhist, they're all the same. The, Dharm, the, the, the Bhagavad Gita says God is light. It doesn't make any bones about it. It says God is light. God is electromagnetic energy. It's what happens when you plug your plug into the wall, in, you plug your computer into the wall, it comes alive because you put God into your computer. And when God's inside thing, things, God animates things. So you plug your computer into electromagnetic energy, it comes alive. You unplug your computer from electromagnetic energy and it dies. The same thing happens with a human being. When the fetus is developing in the womb, it attracts a soul from God, and this is ex how that happens is explained in the book. The, the soul fires up the human electrical systems, and it animates the, the, the body. And as long as the soul is attached to the body, we are living beings. If the body gets sick, it can no longer hang on to the soul. The soul is released, and we, 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 we are dead, like the unplugged computer. So, uh, this whole idea of, uh, it's not me saying that we are light, it's the scriptures. In the Bible it says, in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was God, and God said, let there be light. So in the Bible, light came first from God. If you look at Buddhism, it says Buddha was the illuminated one, the enlightened one. He was light. Uh, in the Bible, in the Christian faith, we believe that if somebody's voltage is very high, they radiate light from their heads. They have a halo. So if we love each other when we're on earth, when we're alive, then our soul voltage goes higher. We can radiate light from the head, and those with light coming from their head go to heaven, and they, come, they join God again. They become God again. If the soul voltage, when we die, if we hate each other while we're alive, the soul voltage gets less inside us. So when it's released from our body, it goes back uh, and, and it cannot escape the Earth's gravity or uh, electromagnetic field or the magnetic field. And so 
what happens is it migrates to another collection of cells which are beginning to form. For example, when you hold a flower in your hands, it looks like a flower, it smells like a flower, it, it feels like a flower, but it's not. It's a collection of biological cells which attracted a bubble of energy from God as it was developing. Now, when the, 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 the flower dies a few days later, the soul is released and it will recombine with the, the cells of a developing worm or a dog or whatever. It, 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 what it means is that it's not a flower. It's God in disguise. A dog is not a dog. It's, dog in, it's, a, it's God in disguise. And, and, and backwards. <laughs> every living thing is God in disguise. And once you get your head around this, you can understand what's going on and why God made the universe the way it is. And that's explained in the book, why God made the universe the way it is. You have a sort of a karmic formula for reincarnation, too, where the poor will come back rich, the rich will come back poor, black come back as white. What if you're, just hypothetical, what if you're both? You're, you start out poor, you become rich. Which one do you come back as if you've lived as both? Uh, well, it's not like that. It, it's, <laughs> it's, you always come back as a corollary. What you're saying is quite correct, George. But you, In other words, if you are a fat person in this life, you can only come back as a thin person. If you are a rich person, you can only come back as a poor person. If you are male, you can only come back as female, generally speaking. Uh, that's it's called the inverse process of transmigration of the soul. And this is explained in all of the treasures of all of the, the tomb, the, the sun-worshipping civilizations, whether it's Tutankhamun, whether it's Qin Shi Huangdi, the first emperor of China, the son of heaven, that's what they called him, the son of heaven, Qin Shi Huangdi, or whether it's Lord Pei Kao, or whether it's the Viracochas, that they all brought the same messages back in pictorial form. There are pictures of them in the book. And as I'm sure you appreciate, George, it's a, it's a very beautiful book. Yeah, uh, it's a very nice. expensive book to produce, Future Science. Yeah, the, the like paper is beautiful. I to to listeners that uh, on Amazon.com, they've put limited availability. Now, the reason they do that is because discounts are not available on the book because it's such an, it was such an expensive book to produce. It's, it's widely available, but uh, it's not discounted, so they have to order it. They don't stock it, and that's all that means. But if you'd like uh, copies signed by me, then you can get them off my website. So th th it's widely available, and there's no problem. Or you can order them from Amazon.co.uk. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid to uh, discover for yourself how gravity works and how to get to heaven. Well, it's a beautiful book, that's for sure. The artwork is beautiful. It's uh, the paper is thick and glossy. It's it's very nice, that's for sure. I imagine it's it was expensive to produce, and it's expensive to mail as well, George. You know, <laughs> it costs it costs twenty U.S. dollars to mail one book from Ireland to the USA. Wow! Wow! Um, exactly. Now I know I, I know that you have sold three million books, copies of your other books, at least because they're and, available in, in up to twenty five languages. And are you able to support yourself just with uh, writing? I have been for the last 20 years. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a great way to go, that's, uh, to be able to explore this stuff and making a living at it. Uh, the author of Future Science, Forbidden Science of the 21st Century, Maurice Cotterell, is our guest tonight.